welcome to the build review of this Dornier 335 from Hobby Boss in 70 second scale. As I already found out in the unboxing video, this kit has some flaws. However, this gave me a chance to try out some tools and it was also my first use of chipping fluid, so it was still a quite enjoyable project. This is what the finished file looks like. If you want to see how I built and painted it, just stay tuned. First up I had to remove a seam line on the fuselage and rescribe a few panel lines. A bigger problem was that the pitch of both propeller blades was wrong, so I just carefully twisted them with my fingers. The next problem were the actuators on the horizontal stabilizers that were molded on both sides on one of them. So again I had to remove them and rescribe the panel lines. Now that the major flaws were eliminated, I was finally able to actually start building. The cockpit really lacked detail, so I added some instrument panels made from plastic card. The DOE 335 was one of the first planes equipped with an ejection seat. In this short sequence I recorded in a video game, you can see how the rear propeller and vertical stabilizer are jettisoned so the pilot can eject safely. Unfortunately, the seat of the kit also lacked detail, so I added seat belts made from masking tape to add at least a bit of detail. There is one decal for the front instrument panel. The scratch-built side panels were painted using a fine panel liner. Now that I was more or less satisfied with the cockpit, I masked it off with these pre-cut masks, which saved me a lot of work. One last thing that bugged me was the absence of a landing light. Therefore I used my rotary tool to remove some material here. Then I drilled two small holes for the lamps. I used the clear sprue to form two tiny light bulbs. As you can tell this was all really fiddly. But I just wanted a bit of detail. I saw this technique at MM scale models on YouTube, but I used Vallejo still water instead of super glue. It also dries transparent, so I thought it would make a good recreation of glass. I applied it 3 or 4 times until the gap was filled. Then I sanded it flat and masked it off so I could prime the aircraft. After that I sprayed the whole model silver and did some pre-shading. I recently got myself a new nozzle for my airbrush, so that worked out nicely. Up next I sprayed the aircraft with AK Interactive's Warren Effects, which is a chipping fluid. I used RLM 65 Light Blue from Hataka to paint the underside in thin coats, so the pre-shading is still slightly visible. Then it was time for the first chipping experiments. I just moistened certain areas and used this interdental brush to create small scratches. Of course this isn't very realistic on a plane that did not see much action, but I just wanted to give it a try. Up next I masked the camo scheme on the upper side. Unfortunately the manual had a few inaccuracies, so I mostly relied on photos of the real file. I sprayed on a few layers of RLM82. If you think that this first stage of masking wasn't really necessary, you are probably right. I just didn't want to cover the underlying layers of chipping fluid and pre-shading too much. After the paint had dried, I masked the RLM82 areas off and airbrushed RLM81 on the remaining areas. Again, this worked flawlessly, but there were a few areas left where I had to make some corrections. With the layer of worn effects underneath, I had the impression that the paint is more prone to scratching, so I had to be very careful with masking. When everything was fixed, I brushed on some water in the areas where I wanted to do the chipping. Then I used the toothpick and again the interdental brush to create the chipping effect. Again, it might not be realistic on an airplane that wasn't used much, like the 335. But I think it adds a lot to the finished model. Next up I used an enamel wash to accentuate the panel lines. I removed most of it again with cotton buds and a microfiber cloth. Then I mounted the propellers that I had previously bent into the right shape. 
After adding these exhausts to the model, I removed the landing gear doors that I had fixed using wet kitchen paper and masking fluid before. The RLM02 inside only needed some minor corrections. Then I glued the landing gear in place. It's relatively detailed and stays in place nicely. After painting a few details, it was time for the decals. If you want to know how I apply them, check out my beginner's guide video. The problem with these decals was that there was a lot of silvering. Also I had to cut some decals in half so I could place them around these exhausts. There was still a lot of silvering so I tried to remove some carrier film and I used a lot of setting solutions. Finally I was able to remove the masking tape from the scratch built landing light. It's not perfect but better than no landing light at all. As always the last step was to remove the masking tape from the canopy. And here is my finished Dornier 335 file. Despite all the inaccuracies of the kit, the build was a lot of fun. There were no fitting issues and if you invest a bit of time you can make it a relatively detailed model. I gave the Hobby Boss Do 335 a score of 46 out of 70 points on scalemodelscore.com, which is a page that Sticky Fingers and I recently launched. As the name suggests, it's a simple way to give your kids ratings and compare certain models with others. Check out the links in the description to see more details. Again, I would like to ask you to follow me on my other pages and spread the word about my small channel. Over and over I get comments on very old videos that my models look bad and I should invest in an airbrush, which I did some years ago actually. That would not happen if people saw my recent videos and how my models got better. But for some reason YouTube seems to hide my current content. So if you like what you see, please tell your friends and other modelers. So that's all from the Dornier 335 file. My next project will be very interesting, so subscribe if you haven't yet. And follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I want to thank Colin for helping me again and all my other friends and modelers all around the world. Stay safe and have a nice day. Bye.